Painters, Mrs. Hales here with another art lesson. Today we're going to talk about drawing and specifically sketching and the importance of that for um, continuing to learn to build new drawing skills. I want to show you the work of Swedish illustrator Matthias Adolfsson. He's done um, lots of work for p illustrations for people that you would recognize like Nike and Chipotle or Chipotle and um, also uh, Pixar, he just done some work for Pixar. He's made some, he's uh, published some books on illustrations and um, I wanted to show you some of his work because I just fell in love with it. One of his themes that he works with that I love are his buildings. Um, and there's so many cool little details and characters in these scenes. Like I've circled a couple just like weird looking animals. They don't have to, you don't have to draw real animals. Like it doesn't have to be a dog. It can be like a combination of animals or a prehistoric looking animal. Um, he puts lots of details in his buildings that are, you see commonly in European buildings. This, the name of this one uh, picture is actually uh, something like a typical European city. So you have like a central area where that tall tower is, where um, cars can drive around, and then you have church and lots of stores. There's a train because lots of people get around by, in, by um, train in Europe. There's a windmill, so a nod to the Netherlands or Scandinavia. There's lots going on in these pictures and lots of um, details, lots of details on the buildings and really interesting roof lines. So he's not focused on one particular thing as much in these illustrations. Drawings are not perfect. They're quirky and they have uh, their own personalities. This is a page out of his sketchbook where he does focus on individual objects. These are all instruments, but you can see um, he still sometimes shows you lots of detail within these instruments. Obviously, these instruments, were parts of them are real and parts of them are made up. He's very creative. He takes things like um, toothpicks, like these cocktail toothpicks, and he puts um, a, his own spin on them. Like he turned them all into birdhouses, but <clears throat> left uh, food at the bottom of them so you would know they were still fancy toothpicks. So he's super creative and inventive. One of his, the ways that he works to be more inventive is to take something like the cocktail toothpick or anything that flies. And then he'll, in his sketchbook, he'll draw like, you know, 10 or 15 different things that could fly. And then he kind of works within certain themes like this, like there's a paper airplane or an octopus carrying something. There's um, a flying car. There's a, there's a dart that's been turned into an airplane. There's a box that's um, connected to a, some kind of dragon that's flying. There's a flying building. In the left-hand corner, it looks like some kind of recorder or something's been turned into some kind of flying vehicle and a bed with wings. So he's got lots of different things that fly or could fly on the, these pages in his sketchbook. For those of you who are at home and are going to be looking for things to draw, um, these are just things from his kitchen that he uh, has drawn and he's given them all, you know, personality and character. But again, they don't look like photographs. They're not perfect sketches. So if you are at home, this is a good place for you to pause the video and go find two or three things that you would like to draw. Um, you can draw things like glue bottles and pens. You can draw staplers. So you can draw some art supplies or some office-y, desk -y type supplies. You could draw toys. You can draw things from your kitchen. Um, tools are a good thing to draw, like screwdrivers and screws and hammers. Those are fun to draw. Um, so those are lots of ideas of things that you can draw. Just everyday objects from around your house. A paper clip, clothes pens, anything like that that's kind of simple that you can draw quickly, but you can still practice um, your drawing skills. If you are at school, your um, teacher or proctor should have a couple things for each student to draw. So like pencils, crayons even, markers, paper clips, anything like that. Work in a sketchbook or on a piece of paper, it doesn't matter. Here's what we are going to do. We are going to draw the same object at least three times. So you're gonna draw it the first time and you're gonna really stare at the object. 
The second time, you're going to draw it again, staring at the object. If you want to draw it from a different angle, you can do that. The third time, you're going to draw it again from life, looking at the object. The fourth time you draw it, you're going to put the object away, and you're going to try to draw it from your memory. Now, when you're drawing an object from life, you really want to look at exactly what you're drawing. In fact, you're going to spend as much time or more time looking at the object than you are looking at your drawing. Because you're drawing this specific pen or this specific crayon. You're not drawing <clears throat> just a crayon from your imagination yet. So we want to learn to draw from life. So we're really studying what we see. What are we looking for? What are we studying? We're looking at, I'm going to start with that middle section. How long is that middle section? How thick is it? How, wh how long is it in relation to the cap of the pen? <clears throat> um, where exactly is this little clip, the pen clip that's on the lid? How long is that? How far out from the pen is that? Um, where is it down from the top of the lid? And how far does it come up from the bottom of the lid? So you're looking for size relationships and distances and shape relationships. So you're learning to measure and find relationships and connections with your eye. Um, how big is the nib of the pen? Um, what's the angle of the pen, of the that bottom part of the pen where the nib is? Is there a ball on the end of the pen? Um, there's a like a little barcode on there. Do you want to include that in your drawing? So those are the kinds of things that you're thinking about. Um, do you want to have an area that is shaded? It's going to help your pen or your crayon, or if you're drawing something round, it's going to help that look more round. Now I'm going to try to recreate this pen <clears throat> from memory. I put my pen away. I'm not looking at it anymore. And I've already forgotten some details about this, um, the clip that holds the, that's on the pen cap. Um, you can see the body of my pen, the main part of my pen, is smaller than my cap. Um, so I've already forgotten a detail like, like how big is the main part of the pen. So you can see my first three pens look a little bit different than my fourth pen, even though you can still tell that the fourth drawing is a pen. So the way that you get better at drawing is you practice drawing from life, and then you do that two or three or four times, and then you put whatever you were drawing away, and then you draw from your imagination. That's how you build up your imaginative drawing skills. You don't have to start with complicated things. Um, these are actually what I call contour drawings because a contour is like the outside edges or the outline of something. Um, once we start shading or putting in highlights, then it becomes more of a, a sketch or a drawing, not just about the outline. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my crayon a personality. I want to turn my crayon into a character. I want it to be silly. So I'm going to redraw my crayon from my imagination. And then I want to turn it into a little person. I'm going to give him uh, little feet and little skinny kind of wimpy arms. I could have just as easily made him like a super muscly guy. But I wanted... Um, him to be kind of skinny. And then um, something I've been doing lately, I have no idea why, is drawing their character's eyes outside of their body. This guy looks like he has lobster eyes or crab eyes. But um, so that's the other thing you could do. You could turn him into an animal and give him lots of arms or crab arms or lobster claws. So you can, you know, be inventive and creative and do whatever you want. Um, give him a dinosaur tail if you want or combine animals. So once you've drawn a few crayons or a few pens, if you want to turn them into people or animals or characters, that's another fun exercise you can do. I drew kind of a bossy guy and then I drew kind of a grumpy friend for him. The next thing I drew um, was a glue bottle. I drew it twice from life and um, I just tried to capture the shapes and the details that I could. Now, the angle that your object that you're drawing is at is going to determine what you see, what parts of the object you see. So for example, I can see, you can see that I can see um, like the top of the bottle, that top edge, and then, but I can't see underneath the bottom of the glue bottle because of the way I'm holding it. So you want to draw it how you see it when you're drawing from life. I ended up turning um, both of my glue bottles into characters. 
Um, you're going to be working, you can work directly in pen, or if you want to work in pencil, you can. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm working in pen so that you guys can see it better. But then I have things like, you know, these lines. And so I had to make his fingers dark so you couldn't see the lines of the paper. And you can see the line of the label through his heel at the bottom. So if you're working in pencil, you can erase those things. Um, the character on the left is kind of like a mouse or a squirrel character, but his tail is way at the bottom of the bottle. So um, you can play with proportions and relationships if you want in your illustrations. Supplies you're gonna need today are two or three pieces of white sketch paper or copy paper. You're gonna need a pencil, an eraser, if you'd like a pen to go over your drawings with, or if you'd like to just jump right in and draw with pen, you can do that. Um, they're just practice and they're just sketches for you. So you need also um, two or three objects to draw. We talked about what those things could be earlier. You're gonna make at least three drawings of each of your objects. So if you have three objects and you make three drawings, you're gonna have at least nine little mini drawings. If you wanna shade those, you can. Um, if you want to turn a couple of those sketches into animals or people or characters, you're welcome to do that. Basically, however you wanna practice this, it's, it's good with, fine with me. All right, boys and girls, I will see you next time. We're going to focus on um, anime or manga portraits.